Hi guys, welcome to Today in History. It's the 4th of June 2020. I'm going to start with our women, as usual, ladies first. Um, yeah, interestingly, you know, today women were given the right to vote for the first time in the United States. So, Congress passed the 19th Amendment, giving women the right to vote, which is really, really interesting. You know, we take some of our freedoms today for granted, you know, um, to think that there was a time when women were not allowed to vote. You know, um, it's incredible. It's incredible. It's incredible. Well, we, we've come a long way. Um, we still have a long way to go. So we've got women voting now. Um, obviously, there is racial inequality, especially in the United States. Um, recent happenings have um, bear, bear that fact out. Okay, in the UK. 1918, a coalition government passed the Representation of the People Act, enfranchising all men over 21, as well as all women over the age of 30. Why not women over 21 as well? But anyway, women were allowed to vote. Women over 30 were allowed to vote in the UK. Um, okay, and then we go on to Nigeria. This lady here, her name is Kudirat Abiola, and she was murdered on this day in 1996. Um, she was the wife of um, a man called Alhaji MKO Abiola who ran for an election um, in 1993. That election was annulled by the then president of the country, Abacha. And um, yeah, so June 12th is a significant day. Obviously, I'm going to shoot a video on June 12th highlighting her husband, who eventually died in prison. So yeah, she was shot dead, um, assassinated whilst her husband, Moshud Abiola, was being detained by the Nigerian government. He was a winning candidate in elections, just like I said earlier, that had taken place in Nigeria in 1993, and was arrested shortly after they were summarily annulled by the ruling hunter. So, democracy for you. Um, yeah. It's not just Nigeria. A lot of countries have gone through um, problems with democracy, you know, especially fledgling democracies. That's what tends to happen. Um, lives are sac sacrificed, and um, usually things improve over time. Let's hope that that will be the case with Nigeria. Right, Tokugawa. This guy was a shogun, kind of like, um, I don't know <clears throat> if an emperor, an emperor is probably um, a bit more powerful position. But Tokugawa Ieyasu was born on the 31st of January, 1543, and died on the 1st of June, 1616, was the founder and first shogun of the Tokugawa shogunate of Japan, which effectively ruled Japan from the Battle of Sekigahara in 1600 until the Meiji Restoration in 1868. Son of a minor daimyo, Tokugawa once lived as a hostage on behalf of his father under another daimyo. He later succeeded as daimyo after his father's death, serving as vassal and general under Oda Nobunaga. 
building up his strength. So the siege of Osaka happened today. Um, it lasted from 1614 to 1615. Um, I found it interesting that they had everything was well planned. They had a winter uh, winter uh, attack that was divided into the winter campaign and summer campaign and lasted for about a year. Okay, so that's interesting. That's the, a bit of Japanese history. The Ford Quadri cycle. Ford Quadri cycle was unveiled today in the year. Let's see what year this was. I think I missed that out. But anyway, it was unveiled today in, I think it, no, let's, let's not. Let's not think. Yeah, 1896. 1896, the fourth quarter cycle, which was developed by Henry Ford. It was Ford's first car, and it was made, it was a simple frame with gas powered, with a gas powered engine and four bicycle wheels mounted on it. The LS cars were hand built one by one and very expensive. The peculiar machines were seen as toys for the rich. In the, 19, in the 1890s, the hostless carriage, in quotes, was a relatively new idea, with no one having a fixed, universal idea of what a car should look like or how it should work. So on June 4th, 1896, in a tiny workshop behind his home on 58th Bagley Avenue, Detroit, where the Michigan building now stands, Ford puts the finishing touches his pure ethanol powered motor. After more than two years of experimentation, Ford at the age of 32 had completed his first experimental automobile. He dubbed his creation the Quadricycle, so named because it ran on four bicycle tires. Interesting. So early beginnings of our of what we take for granted today again, you know, cars all over the place now, automobiles. Um, now we're thinking of transitioning while well, we, ha we have started transitioning to electric power and other um, alternatives, which kind of brings me to um, <laughs> something I saw a few months ago when I went to London, a car from the 50s, basically 50s America. I think it was a Ford uh, Mustang. Um, and interestingly, the pollution from that car was horrendous. The noise and the pollution was horrendous. Which also brings me to um, air pollution levels now during lockdown. Um, a few months ago, must have been two months ago, a few weeks into lockdown, there was this news um, article which um, they done some research and found that the pollution levels, the air pollution levels in London had dropped to 1950s levels, which was, I thought was incredible. You know, so hopefully lessons are being learned from lockdown. It's not all negative. It's not all bad news. So that somehow we can um, do something about um, the ruin in which we are, um, for lack of a better term, the, the, the bad or the... the all the negative things that have to do with pollution and, you know, uh, um, the plants, animals, you know, we need to basically take care of our Earth, of our planet much better. Okay, next is Joe Clark, who was... A former was a prime minister, I shouldn't say was a former tautology, former prime minister of Canada. He was the youngest um, Canadian prime minister. So the day before his 40th birthday, he was sworn into office. And um, he was in office from the 4th of June, 1979 to the 3rd of March, 1980. 
Okay, so that's him, presumably, just after he was sworn in, and that's him today. All right, so next we go to Michael Parkinson. Michael Parkinson is a, let's see, Sir Michael Parkinson. He was knighted in 2008, obviously on this day, on this date, I must correct myself, Sir Michael Parkinson. CBE, which stands for Command of the British Empire. So that's the title he got when he was knighted. And also, obviously, he now became a sir. So when you, you, you're knighted, you you take the... Um, um, is it a prefix or is it... Um, someone tell me in the comments. Anyway, you get the title. Yeah, it's a title, sir. Um, for those who do not know, you know, I guess most people who are watching this, uh, watching from outside the UK, and may not know what the implication is of being knighted. So when you get knighted, you, your title changes from Mr. to Sir. So he's, uh, he's now Sir Michael Parkinson. He's an English broadcaster, journalist, and author. He presented his television talk show, Parkinson, from 1971 to 1982, and from 1998 to 2007 as well as other talk shows and programs, both in the UK and internationally. He also worked in radio broadcasting. He has been described by The Guardian as the great British talk show host. Parkinson, Sir Michael Parkinson, was born in the village of Cotworth in Barnsley, then in the West Riding of Yorkshire, England. Since 1974, it's been included in the new metropolitan county of South Yorkshire. He was a son, or is a son of a minor. Finally, on this date as well, in 1988, something else was going on in America. This young man, baseballer, his name is Ricky Henderson. Ricky is a baseball player, as you can see from the picture. And he said he steals two bases for record 249 as a New York Yankee. Ricky Henderson, let's see, was born on the 25th of December, Christmas Day, 1958. He's now retired and um, was a left fielder. And he played in Major League Baseball for nine teams from 1979 to 2003, including four separate tenures with his original team, the Oakland Athletics. He was nicknamed the Man of Steel. He's widely regarded as baseball's greatest leadoff hitter and base runner. He holds the major league records for career stolen bases, runs, unintentional walks, and lead off home runs. There we go. That's Ricky Henderson for you. What a way to end today in history for the 4th of June 2008. Um, let's go through all the. I'm not going to end it here, sorry, my apologies other events, so-called minor events that happened today. So I'm going to read those out to you now. That should take maybe two or three minutes. Okay, let's get started. Or should I say, let's continue. Right, on this day as well, the Chinese crackdown on protests. Chinese crackdown on protests leads to Tiananmen Square massacre. This is really, really, really Horrible. Horrible. So this was a, a demonstration for democracy. And that was in 1989. 
there's still no democracy in um, China. There's some issue going on now with Hong Kong. I think they want to um, get Hong Kong as part of the union. So Hong Kong is more westernized. Anyway, so World War II on this day in 1944, the U-505, a submarine from Hitler's deadly fleet, is captured. Martha Stewart in 2003 was indicted for securities fraud and obstruction of justice. Nineteen forty Operation Dynamo at Dunkirk ends. Let's see what happens. Uh, what else happened on um, the, on this day? In nineteen eighty six, Jonathan Pollard admits to selling top secret information to Israel. American Revolution. Lieutenant or Lieutenant Colonel George Washington builds forth necessity. That happened in 1754. Interesting. He was 22 at the time and I guess he was the one who sparked the war. And he eventually became America's first president. We shall end that on this note. Lieutenant Colonel George Washington Beals Fort Necessity. Thanks for watching, guys. See you tomorrow, June the 5th, for Today in History. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the notification bell if you want to hear from me. Thanks, guys. Bye.